All right, so um, let me say good morning to all our viewers across the world. This is the US based Focus on Liberia Television. we live here from Monrovia, Liberia. Let me say good morning if it is the morning hour in your area. Good afternoon if it is uh, the afternoon. So it's great to be here. Uh, my name is Prince Moba. I'm here and this uh, morning I have come to speak with uh, uh, Councillor T. Dempster Brown. Uh, Dempster Brown is uh, the chairperson on or I mean, of the Independent National Commission on Human Rights here in Liberia. Uh, an entity responsible to uh, deal with human rights issue, domestic violence issue. But the council would have said, Well, I mean, I'm going to ask any other questions. So, let, once again, let me say good morning and welcome. The time in Liberia is nine minutes after 11 o'clock in the morning. So, Council, let me say once again good morning and welcome to uh, Focus on Liberia Television Live. How are you doing? Yeah, you're welcome uh, to be with us here. I don't know whether it is this our first time appearing on this, on this network. Focus on Liberia is a US based online TV. Is this the is first time? Yeah, the first time. Okay, how are you doing, Council? Yeah, I'm all right, fine. How is the commission? Yeah, the commission is, is trying. It's working based upon its mandate. Our mandate is to protect and promote human rights. And we are working within the framework of that. And that's great. So this morning, I'd uh, like us to talk on a few things, a few uh, uh, things have dropped. Uh, draw our attention as media people and also Liberian citizens. Let us begin on this note. Uh, recently in Liberia, we have uh, heard a report of human rights violations, domestic violence, you know, killings of innocent people, case, and all the kinds of things. But to begin with, uh, what can we say? What can you say? Some of all is working with an entity responsible, you know, with with those kinds of issues. What is responsible for those kinds of heinous crime? Tonight you see a child will be murdered, be past extracted, and photos will flow on, on social media. A female will be murdered by other their, their spouses or anybody for that matter. What can we see? What is responsible for that? Um, the, we have series of uh, problems the root causes of the uh, constant violation of the rights of the citizens. Now, I will, I will, I will, I will tell you, there are laws. We have laws. The laws are on the book, uh, criminal law. For example, we have um, murder. If you kill, you have to go to court. And when you are found guilty, sometimes you'll be sentenced for life. Okay, that's one. But what is happening now is that the laws are there, but the laws are not in force. For example, um, if you go to the prison, like uh, Central Prison here, Moruga now, we got 1,203 persons in itself. And out of the 1,203 in itself, we have only 247 that have been convicted. The order there, no trial. Which is a gross violation of the rights of those that have been detained. Because under the constitution of this country, if you accuse somebody of a crime, that person must be sent to court. He must be given speedy trial. But if you keep him there without trial, you violated his right already. That's one of the major issues that you know. Now, on several occasions, we begin to wonder why is it that people who commit crimes like today, um, there is a newspaper that came out of a story. Uh, I gave a speech somewhere 
And it says that killers in Liberia are policy makers. You see this? That's my picture there. Now, you have people who committed heinous crimes, but they go with impunity. Then what do you expect? So the, 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 the respect for the rule of law is absence okay. in our society. That would be of course. That's the cause. We do not respect the rule of law. And where there's you know disrespect for the rule of law, there's chaos. You talk about people killing people. Mm -hmm. uh, sometime you get in the morning, then that yesterday night. There were reports from across the bridge that the Corway era uh, they saw uh, a dead body in the street. Now all I don't know the killing that is going on, why is it that killing will go on? In our country we have laws. The challenges that are causing this problem is with the police. Police do not have logistics. And the number of police is limited. We got 3,000 police officers in the Republic of Liberia. No vehicle. Like yesterday, somebody's house was burning in the car. Um, the fire brigade police said they don't have fuel in the car. So they can't go there. And no house is burnt. Artists. So the challenges also are contributing to some of these things that we're talking about. A policeman cannot go in the night to go out if he doesn't have fuel. He yeah, always spoke of the law, there are locks on the book uh, of me. But another thing uh, I'm, I'm looking at it, making a specific reference to the 2019 you know, the Mexican Violent Act that was passed by the legislature. I think the intent of that law was to educate citizens of what the Mexican violence are and what can be done to anyone who has got in the act. But uh, do you think uh, the, 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 the citizens were sensitized or are sensitized enough of those laws you talk about, even the, uh, the laws that talk about when you kill, what should be done, and, and all of kinds of things, because most of the cases come from rural Liberia. Uh, yeah. What do you make of that? We have our monitors there. In fact, uh, immediately 2021, when we, were, when we were nominated and confirmed, when we got here, we decided to go on a nationwide tour. I went to Lofa, Bon, and Nimba. The other commissioner was shared in the Bureau of Counties. And all of the problems that we met with in the counties are all identical. <clears throat> that is overcrowdedness of the cells, prison. People being there for four or five years, no trial. Now, on the issue of the SGB, mm -hmm. the sexual gender-based violence, mm -hmm. we have tried our best to educate our people, you know, workshops, educating them as to the situation that we find ourselves in because of the sexual-based violence. And one of the contributing factors that we believe that is causing problems and which might even cause death, in fact, causing death, it has to do with the drugs. The drugs are so much in this country. Children all live in the graveyards. They take all kinds of drugs. As a result, when they see human being, they don't look at him as a human being or look at her as a human being. So what's a big, bigger picture in that? Hmm? What's a bigger picture in that? What do you look at? What do you see? About the... Who is yeah, responsible for that? They, if they take the drugs, hmm. they don't regard anybody. They don't have no respect for anybody. They don't respect their parents. They don't even respect the rule of law. Okay. 
they kill. Right now, if you ride a motorbike in the night, be careful. Because most of those guys, they got a weapon with them. When they take the drugs, you know, you got anybody. So, they generate violence. If you go to the prison, almost 45% of those that are being kept in the prison, central prison, they have to do with sexual violence or general violence, rape and other things. But no trial. Okay. Why will you keep your kind of people? No trial. How dangerous is, is it? It is. It is dangerous because uh, after, for example, you know, in the second court, mm -hmm. the case goes there. The law says that you must keep that person in jail within two successive terms of court. If you don't try that individual that has been accused of rape or any other crime, which is felony, mm -hmm. that case has to be dropped. That is, under our law, penal code, criminal procedure law, we have 18.1, the judge can throw the case out under the law. Then, under 18.2 of the criminal procedure law, mm -hmm. the defendant who is the accused, a lawyer can file a motion to dismiss the case because government doesn't want to prosecute the person. Now, if you release those people under these conditions, when they go, they do the same thing. Why will government not prosecute cases of first degree felony? Why, why are they telling you, telling you guys who, or you people who are in the human rights area? What did they say to you? I mean, for example, I'm accused of, of rape, for example. That's a first degree felony on our law. Yeah. I'm in place behind bar. Two terms of court should be investigated and then convicted or whatsoever the case might be. The charge, I said, I mean, I got all, I mean whatsoever penalty that, that it could make come away. Yeah. But what, what is responsible for the prolonged delay? What is responsible for that? We have uh, attended a series of workshops and we will be holding the prosecution responsible, that is. The um, Ministry of Justice, we are being, you know, accusing the Ministry of Justice of negligence. But the Ministry of Justice will bounce back mm -hmm. and tell us that they don't have money to prosecute. There will be funding for prosecution. Like, for example, if a case is placed on the docket for trial mm -hmm. in the term of court, the witnesses for the government might be, you know, transported there. They have to get their money to pay their way. The government should do that. Yeah, it, it, it is a responsibility of the government. But uh, no money. What What do the Ministry of Finance, Finance tell you? Oh, you, your, your, your word was not reached that far? No, we don't question the Ministry of Finance. Okay. The only people who question that, the Justice Ministry. So if the Justice Ministry says no money, so it means that no money? Yeah, the one, yeah if they say no money, because you, you, you cannot go to court. Like, for example, uh, they have uh, this uh, one hundred million dollars drug drug case. Yeah, the defense counsel, headed by Wilson Wright, Counsel Wilson Wright, they filed a motion to subpoena certain people to go to court and testify against the government. You see that now. Those people, government responsible to pay their way anyway, but no money. Say there is no money, they will remain in jail there. Now, so, so, counsel, before I come to, I come to my second question, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm actually focus on, I mean, the, the, the kind of increase in, in, in this, uh, I mean, sexual and gender based violence and all the kinds of things. But how dinero it is if a young man in maybe one village in, in Bon County, for example, commit murder, kill maybe his girlfriend. He, I mean, he's been arrested by the police, sent to jail. He should be there for two terms of going to be investigated, if found guilty, sentenced for, I mean, for whatever the, 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 the penalty should be. How dinero it is when the term, when the terms passed, his lawyer pray 
that he should be free and he goes back in the community and those who maybe have similar model do similar act see him in the community how do you know it is yeah it, 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 there will be um for example if if john brown is free in a village he killed somebody mm. and because uh the prosecution failed to proceed with the case and they could free him there are two things that may happen there okay. one more justice the people in the, the, the in the village they might jump on him and kill him because their fear is that he will do it he will, he will do it again and there are people that in the neighborhood there that are looking at him he did it nothing happened to him i would do my own mm -hmm. And you get it clear? Mm -hmm. This is the problem. He did nothing yeah. different about yeah, it. Myself, we can do it. Yeah. I do you think it's that why we see the increase of those kinds of cases across the country? Definitely. Yeah. Do you think so? We call that culture of impunity. Okay. That is, people who commit crimes must be punished. If they are not punished, it will continue. This is where Labro found herself. Your works confront with international standards. How embarrassing it appears to you sometimes when you hear, I mean, your commission cries in your government, cries for those kinds of impunity that are, that are ongoing in the country, but absolutely, absolutely nothing comes from other end. How does it appear to you? I will tell you a story. Mm. Uh, we have three major cases that that were brought here by the victims. There's a girl uh, working with the police, CID. And uh, she was sexually abused by her boss. Wow. Yeah, high up in the police. Wow. The girl went to the police and reported the incident. They put it down, played that case. So she came here. And we decided to invite, I mean, we, we wrote the director of police to turn it over to us. Current director? Yeah, uh, soon that he should turn the mail over to us to find out where, where because usually we investigate mm -hmm. before we send to send to court. Mm -hmm. All right. But the the um director of police refused to do that. Wow. Yeah, so what we did was that we decided to file a petition at the Supreme Court to compel the Ministry of Justice to prosecute the man. And we won the Supreme Court. And we won the case. You won the case? Yes. In, in favor of the, the, the officer? Yeah, the yes, police officer. In, in, yeah, in favor of the girl. All right. We won the case. Now, what happened now is to carry the man to court because he's a high ranking officer, the police refused. The Supreme Court instructed them to send the man to court. You see how the, this society looks like. Then, we have a second case. And to do the EPS director. The current one? Yes. He ordered, ordered the, the beating of a girl. Yeah. It was all on social media. All right. And um, the girl came back to us. She came and then uh, reported the incident. So I personally wrote the EPS director. I sat in for a conference. I know with this girl. The girl came with a husband and the EPS man came. When he came, he asked for a panel. He started begging. He begged that he was wrong. And the girl said, okay. Since he, you know, confessed judgment, I don't want one cent from him. Let him go. The high left. Then we have another case that involves the same police director, Patrick Sulu. July 26th incident that took place at the embassy where a fellow was minor. We invited him to have a puppy yelling. And uh, he refused to come. In fact, he wrote me a letter that. He was not subject to us. Mm. Yeah. So I said, okay. The same Patrick said he's not subject to us. We'll show you where the law is. 
So we issue a writ of arrest of Patrick Sukuma, and you were arrested. The last day, July 26, I tell you, but we were arrested by the court, and the court turned you over to us. You see, so we believe in the rule of law, but it's difficult to, you know, to operate in the, in, in, in the face of the kind of situation we find ourselves in. What is our situation? The situation is that people do not regard laws from No respect for the world. They use power, overuse power. Okay, so there we are. Then um, they kill you. Yeah. They so let me just let me just uh, inform our viewers from also if you just joining us, this is uh, focus on Liberia. My name is Prince Moba. I'm here with uh, Councillor T. Dexter Brown. He's a chairperson of the Independent National Commission on Human Rights here in Liberia. I have a kind of speak with him on so many issues that confront uh, the rights of people, the dignity of people, and how well the laws are enforced in Liberia. So uh, I mean, you are trying to speak on the, the, the second point, but let me let me ask this question. Then maybe you just combine the two. Yeah. Uh, recently in Boone County, there was a case involving one Jefferson. I just forgot his last last name. Yeah, yeah, Leslie killed his his, his girlfriend, uh, and and he's not the only person. Many other cases that you may have heard of them. They may have come before you. They may be some of them are being caught by now. So what do you think should be done with people like that? Those we talk about lifetime imprisonment. Some of us will say that I'm going to jail for a lifetime. Some of us will say, put them to death. Or you, from the, you know, from the human rights background, you will say, no, do something else. What do you think of that? Well, uh, the commission is advocating for the abolition of death penalty. Okay. Because Ladura, wow. Ladura is a member of the Committee of Nations, UN. Okay. And uh, that is the major issue. You don't give proper punishment. Send a man to jail and he stay there. Okay. If he does it from your yeah, business. Now, with Jefferson, mm -hmm. Jefferson is supposed by now so will be tried. Yeah. Okay. Sentencing, whether life imprisonment or 25 years or 30 years, the high is supposed to be. But we do not know up to this time whether he's in court. I can remember last year, no, the early part of last year, there was another case in Nimba County where a child got missing and that child they were looking for that child police arrested you know uh, certain people who were involved but later on they put it down play the case and it caused problem in Nima. so what the people did they were angry the villagers but have somebody else's child. So, um, when the citizen gave warning to the police and they wanted speedy investigation, police went to that village. Come they were came to town and held the police hostage. Yes. He held the police hostage that they wanted that child. And they wanted the, the door of the act to be brought to justice. The, the, the villagers? Yeah, the villagers. And the police looking at the law went for rescue. Yeah, they don't play. So they say, okay, we'll use our culture. And the police were held hostage. They couldn't come out, they couldn't go anywhere. They were in one place. But later on, the police decided to take the decisive step and started arresting people. The respect for the rule of law is the problem. You don't, if you have, if you get power, you don't misuse the power. You must be able to abide by the rule of law for the stability of the society. But where there is no respect for law and order, there will always be tension. And that's what Liberia is, in your opinion? Be, yes. It turns you too hard. Why do you think those kind, kinds of cases are not drawing the attention of government. Uh, you, you as a person and myself and any other person will go in the morning 
maybe you drive and come to work, you see dead body on the road. Maybe you pass in the community, you see group of people crying that oh my child was murdered and all the kinds of things. But in my opinion, and in the opinion of many librarians, it not seem to be drawing the attention of state actors, the government in, in, in particular, in general rather. Why do you think that is happening? You see, um, there is a division of labor mm -hmm. in the government. When you talk about crimes, that's the Ministry of Justice that is responsible for protecting life and property. Now, where people are disappearing, people are dying, mysterious death going on, it is the Ministry of Justice that's supposed to act promptly to protect life and property. The president is not a lawyer. He only sitting up there. But he gives somebody responsibility to do the work. But the only problem I have is that if the president can't do the work, you fire the man, somebody sack the man, you can't do the work. Okay. You know, for your own protection as head of state. And this is where we are. So if, if the president does not fire or I mean, this means that the person who is not performing, and then the person remains in power, and then the state is is, is sinking into something else. Yeah. Do you think you? I mean, do you think the president is not the president as an appointing attorney is not part of the problem? Don't you think so, sir? Yeah, that why people hold the that why people hold the head of state responsible. Fire the people who are not performing well for your own integrity. If if you find out that. You put John Brown somewhere and you're not performing well, and people are blaming you. You fire the person. This is where we are. All right, so the president, the president, I mean, called himself the feminist in chief. And currently, as we speak, I'm sure we still have the, the, the SGVB roadmap ongoing. The Minister of China has spoke about that uh, sometime. I can remember the minister spoke about it in one forum that I attended. But if you see the violation of human rights, the violation of women and children's rights, the violation of the rule of law ongoing, what is the hope of all that he said on the female in chief? I want to make sure females and women and children are protected, even the, the Roma that is ongoing. How, what? What is the hope? How, 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 how can we achieve that? But now, now we should be talking about respecting the rule of law, respect our women, the dignity of our women and children, I mean, sodomization, rape all over the place. Yeah, the one I was saying that uh, there is division of labor. Okay. It's important to that. Yeah, if you come back to that, the prayers of feminists. And he, he, he put in place some mechanism to stop the, uh, this uh, gender based violence. Mm. But it doesn't work. Why? Because we are, can't go in a full room. <laughs> you know, you can't go there. No. Is, is a responsibility is, is the head, chief executive. So those that he, he gave the job to do must be able to do the job. You see? So if you cannot do the job, you get it out. And put somebody there who can do the job. So that the society will be free. At present now, by six, seven, eight, you don't find anybody in the street. People mm -hmm. scared. The other boy will cut glasses in their hands. Running behind people. Who is responsible? Justice Ministry. Do you, do you sometimes have, I mean, conversation with the Minister of Justice? Yeah, yeah. We can meet and discuss. How does it feel sometimes in his conversation? Like you speaking with me and now. Does it does it sometimes express remorse on how the country is going? How you, I mean how it looks like? And, and I think the problem with the Justice Ministry is funding. Funding. No money. Wow. In my day, we got 15 counties, and we have 15 county attorneys. 15 county attorneys. Then we have magistrate courts. We have city solicitors. Those people, like for example, in the magistrate court, city, Monroe city corporation, I mean, city court, if they carry somebody there on criminal offense or charge, the witnesses must be able to be transported there. Because if you want your case to be uh, uh, speedily you know, determined, they make assignment. 
Who is responsible to pay the businesses way? It is the government. So they, 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 they say the solicitor or the county attorney cannot take money from your own pocket to transport people in front of vehicle. Why do you think when cases of, of, of sexual and gender based violence and, and murder, what do you think of those cases, first degree felony cases that involve the death of people, why do you think of those cases are speedily investigated and the, the perpetrators are punished? Why do you think it will curtail this increase in the violation of people's rights? Yes. Why do you think so? Um, if John Brown kills in a village and they carry you to court and you found guilty and it is announced that you will be in prison for life a friend will be a friend they will not do the same thing this is where and the issue of the drugs what do you what do you think the, the proliferation of drugs all over the place what is the for that and what yeah. do you think when, when, when you have stronger laws on the our kids will not be doing what they're doing now. The problem is, the drug law is very weak. We have been speaking about drugs law. We have been raising the issues that drug cases should not be billable. The same way with rape. Rape is not billable. Drugs should not be billable. If they arrest you, they carry you. You will be in jail until after the disposition of the case. If they say you are not guilty, they free you. If you are guilty, you serve your sentence. But right now, children that live in a ghetto, for example, or some of the children sleeping in a uh, 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 graveyard, mm -hmm. they're selling drugs. They selling drugs. Who giving them these drugs? They don't have the means of importing drugs. Like I, I saw in the paper this morning, here, very interesting. Where they got Liberia, Nigeria custom official sees huge consignment of cocaine from Liberia. You drop living like people and carrying it to Nigeria now. <laughs> it's a business. This time, not from Nigeria, Liberia. Yeah. This place is a transit point. Hmm. They are trying to export it. I mean, yeah, export it to Nigeria for money making. That's what the people are seeing. So, drugs, the major crimes that have been committed is the result of taking drugs. Council, what do you what do you see uh, deep deep from the, from your own uh, you know point of view on, uh, when you look at things as an as an elder of this nation? Uh, where do you see Liberian Liberia headed, um, especially the younger generation? Uh, talking about the drugs issue, what do you envision? Well, the, uh, we just have to pray. Because the children are all messed up. And in case of violence, the children will kill innocent people. They will be used. They will kill innocent people, the young boys. Because they will take the drugs, they don't care who they go to. So, we have to pay attention to the issue of the drugs. That's the major issue that is confronting this country, drugs. All of the crimes that have been committed, murder, you know, uh, armed robbery, all are on the highest speed. If the children are about to do commit a crime, they take drugs. They're not afraid of anybody. So we have to pray to God to come to our rescue because, especially in the face of the election that is coming. Politicians may use these boys and must kill us with drugs. 
So two more questions, cancer as, as a close up. I want to ask a question on on what is in the paper, quoting you, or I mean the the, the, the front page story here uh, has something that says killers in Liberia are policy makers. RNCH our boss decries. What do you mean by this, Council? Yeah, well, you know, this is uh, what I'm seeing here is that mm -hmm. if you have somebody who violated the rights of citizens and killed 250,000 persons during the war, who is that person? No, I mean, those that brought the war. You mean, they, I mean, are you, who are you referring to? Oh, those are brought the war. Those oh, are you making the, reference? I'm making reference. Those are brought the war. Okay. Okay. And instead of establishing a special court to try them, a war crime court, we allow them and give them position, you know, some of their... Are you speaking about Senator Johnson, the George Bully? No, no. I mean, there are a lot of people that are in the government. Okay. A lot of people in the government that fought the war. We're not referring to one person. Yeah. But those that did, that brought the war, that caused, you know, my mother died from the same war. They shot her. Oh, she wow. died from LP, LP, LPC. Wow. In Japan. Wow. And so sometimes when I'm talking about this thing, I feel bad. We can't continue like this. People kill, and then when you go to it, they say, no, war crime is not necessary. In Rwanda, one million persons were killed, genocide, in 1994. What the people did? They set up a war crime court and tried all those that committed this act and deny them from participating in the government. The same way 1997, ROUF, 70. Mm. For this example, mm. went there, and we were charged and invaded the place. What happened next? I put the people arms and legs, killed thousands of people. Equals got involved with Great, Great Britain, sent troops there, and they had it under control. When they had it under control, the seven new people appealed to the United Nations for a, a war crime court. The how they set up that special court. At the end, all those that participated in the RUF war, they have been deprived of working in the government in Seven. They have been deprived. In fact, most of them have been ostracized. In Liberia, 1990, 250,000 persons died in the war, property destroyed, they looted banks and all of that. The, 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 the issue of TROC, after they, they went to Accra, the peace agreement, they said they wanted, you know, uh, TROC. All right, TROC was established but they came up in that TRC report. They said that there must be punitive measure against those that they killing. That is, there must be war crime court. They see the TRC report. Mm -hmm. It is a situation. But up to this time, when you talk about war crime court, the people say no. It will create hard feeling. Why is it in other countries they have it and we can't have it? So today, when there's any issue, you know, it put on the floor, there will not say because those are supposed to act on it to participate in the war. Great. The final question, Council. Oh, yeah. uh, let me let me put it this way. Sometime last year we had uh, these cases that involve the loss of lives, starting with uh, Albert Peter, Katie Lama, and Charles from something more. Then we came to uh, Princess Kopo, and then three other guys went with uh, Mr. Moses, who almost uh, the, the funeral home, mm -hmm. and they, they were alleged they, they were alleged to have gotten drunk up to now. Up to now, I mean, I mean, we still, I mean, they still that they formerly members are still around. The question I want to ask you is, 
the government came up with a report into these cases. What is the what is your editor's stance on what how, what went wrong? I mean, what what went on? What can you say? Because I'm asking this question because you do your specific job that international community depends on your fundings and take decisions. So, what can you what can the, the, the independent national commission say what what are you, what are you reading about all the things I talk about? Well, on the issue of uh, gifty and uh, you guys are taking away to the uh, uh, symbosis, you know, we were monitoring at that time. We we're not at the commission, but I was heading a group. Called Center for the Protection of Human Rights. We were investigating. Mm -hmm. But what is interesting is that most of these cases have been politicized. They, they do not want to give those who are responsible to investigate a chance. Why didn't they get the politicized? Well, that is the lack of political will to prosecute. That's it. Lack of political will to prosecute. Go ahead. And those who politicize in the case, they know their reason. No, no, that's what I'm asking. Why would, I, why would someone want to politicize somebody's death? What do you want to achieve? They know the reason. Okay. And this is why today the country is not uh, terrible. Where we are, the only boy alone. Some, somebody is somebody coming and say, Prayer can I have policies and implementation. What do you make of that? One yeah. of the viewers um, just in a message. Okay. The what I'm saying that um the issue of prayer, something we can't do about prayer. But my emphasis or the Human Rights Commission emphasis is the respect for the rule of law. Everybody now doing their own thing. No respect for anybody. No respect for the rule of law. As a result, our children are dying. Was the commission um, ever disappointed with the findings of those cases? Oh, the cases named earlier on. Yeah, but the, 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 the investigation that was done, we have not received any report from anybody. Really? Yes. The, 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 auditors, yeah. the, the auditors investigation, you, you don't have a report. You mean on, on the, the three children? No, yeah, the, three, the three children, the, the auditors that died, and no report. And and the process couple. No. We don't have any report. Only and you, and you don't have the report. Yeah, yeah. Only issue of Princess Couple. Couple. We raise issue on that. That the uh death of that girl, there are people that are responsible they might be brought to justice. Because the girl would not just die like that. Today they play around, they play around, and no hear no thing. <laughs> we don't have no report on that. We no report. To use on that feed so disheartening for your country, probably. Yeah, to be frank, uh, my wife told me one night, she said, the way I look at you, you're getting older and older. If you continue to put in people's business on your head, you will not live long. <laughs> she told me that. He says, sweetheart, I see you you're on your feet. And nobody listening to you. You have to be careful. I said, well, God brought me on earth for, for a mission. My mission is to help people, to talk for the poor people. And so I told her, don't worry, nothing will happen to me. And you see, so this is where we are. Hmm. Has, there been, has there been any point in time, I mean, you have some of those hardcore cases and you receive calls, say, oh, uh, chairman, I mean, we don't want for your commission to get into the other one here. Chair didn't want with us, I mean, we'll handle it. I mean, no, they can't do that. Nobody can do that because um, they can't do that because if we can carry, you know, uh, the judgment minister to the Supreme Court, we, we sue the government through the that's the minister, and we won the case. So anybody, we can carry anybody to court. Yeah, we can carry anybody to court. 
if we know that you're wrong and you don't want to abide by the rule of law, we'll carry the court. What is a pleasure having been here beyond these days? And I'm sure not much money you get in front of you. And others are running for political offices, others are taking thousands of dollars as, as, as officials of government. But it's a pleasure being doing this thing and, and, and maybe not running to go to the legislature or one of the ministerial jobs and all the kinds of things. That's my mission that God sent me on. I was brought on this pipe to talk for people, to help people. Be senator or representative, I'm not interested in that. Where I am, if I die, I know I will see God because what God sent me for is what I'm doing. I don't have to go wrong behind people I want to be senator, I want to be representative. No. What God brought me on the way for is what I'm doing. If I wanted to get rich, I was going to get rich during any just time. There was a time that Ellie called me. She sent for me. Uh, the late Karanda, Councilor Karanda. I think you can remember her name. Mm -hmm. She took Karanda that she wanted to see me. And I went there. And she told me, she said, Oh, damn, sir. I call you. I want you to do a special job for me. I said, Good job. At the time, she had a problem with Edwin Snow. Edwin Snow was, was speaker. She said, Edwin Snow went to China to implement foreign policy, and which is not his job. That's my job. Charge me. How many dollars you charge me? I will pay and want for me to deal with Edwin Snow to get you out. And I told Ellen, I said, you know what I will tell you? If you don't want any, I mean, you don't want Snow to be speaker. Use the same house to get him out, but not Dempster Brown. He look at me for no, he shook her head. Ah, never. Hmm. So money is not, if you die, you leave it behind. You build houses, you die, and you go in the hole, they put you in the grave. You leave everything behind. But do the job that God sent you to do. This is how Ellie and myself, she got suspicion. She, Ellie, Ellie was afraid of me. Because I tell you the truth, I look at you, I tell you, I fear about you. So the highest. Great. So just close up. Uh, folks, if you just joining us, my name is Prince. This is the US based focus on Liberia and Bay here with uh, Councillor Tester Brown. For over one hour now, he got me to close up. Uh, Kaso, you just a close up. What can you say to your viewers, people watching you from, from the States, from, from, from Europe, from Asia, from Africa, and all parts of the world? What can you say? Some of them are Liberian citizens. Yeah. Most of them are Liberian citizens in fact. Okay. Uh, in my closing statement, there are people in the United States. They listen to all what happening in Liberia. But I will assure them and I will promise them that the Human Rights Commission will remain committed. We don't have weapons. The only thing we can use is the law. So all those that are committing crimes, prison will soon be going to court in some cases. So they should, they should rest assured that those whose rights are being violated, they will get justice. That's the only thing I have to tell them. Thank you so much for, for giving me this, this time uh, to have this conversation with me. Thanks so much. All right, folks, so once again, my name is Prince Smoba, and I've been here with uh, Councillor T. Denzel Brown, the chairperson of the Independent National Commission on Human Rights here in, in Liberia. I've been speaking to him from his office on 20th Street, that is uh, in Sinko, Fiamma. It's been a very good conversation. Thanks for following me. Another time you will have me on, it will be when we have the time to do so. But it been great, and it is my hope that uh, we had those kinds of conversations most of the time. Thanks for following me. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.